a lot for having me. My name is Adrian at Artrevisin. Um, uh, I've been actually investing and trying to build medtech startups for the last 14 years. So for me, it's a pleasure to be here, especially because I'm seeing uh, this conference grow year upon year. So congratulations a lot to the organizers and for having me around. So I wanted to talk a little bit about what we've been doing and what the vision is for a growing digital health ecosystem. We're seeing this growing, not just locally, but on an international standard. And I think something um, I want to tie also what uh, previous presentation by Mr. Zenkutayar um, actually did before me, um, basically on putting the patient at the center of a service. So in my little experience over the years, I wanted to look a little bit at what has been done, how the healthcare systems have been working over the past years, and what is changing. I think over the past few years, things have been moving more and more towards having patients staying at home, receiving the care they needed in order for them to actually be guided and also to be part of a larger ecosystem. It gives the caregiver much more space and at the same time, it gives the patient himself much more freedom into living in his own environment. And this you can see, now this is actually data uh, gathered before COVID. And you can see already a paradigm shift moving from a number of services being done in normal setups, moving towards a number of services being done and being undertaken in a patient's home. So this actually already gives us a little bit of a move towards where we're getting now. I think post-COVID, this has been increasingly and increasingly expanding. And I think that actually is ex extremely important. So, something very, very important is that everything needs to be part of the patient, that putting the patient at the center of a whole ecosystem. And I think this is extremely, extremely important for us to keep in mind when developing a digital health ecosystem. What is actually important is that all sections need to be taken into consideration, and most, most importantly, is to keep the patient himself at the center of this ecosystem. And that is basically not actually designing technologies, etc., and try to flog them to the patient, but understanding the context of the patient, actually what they are, so the person factors, the context factors, where we're applying these digital health monitoring, for example, systems, electronic patient records, etc., and the activities. The important part is that a patient needs to always be at the center of each activity we're trying to monitor in order for us to have something that is reliable and at the same time, it's something that the patient will need and want to use. If we actually design something that the patient does not want to use, then it's useless. You can have the best technology in the world, but if you actually create something that the patient will never use, it's gonna remain on the shelf or not delivering to its full context. And what we have been, we have been doing over the past years, um, myself, I always wanted to try to build, invest in startups, and build and invest in technologies. And what we started off a few years ago was with a product called the Humanity One. The Humanity One was aimed purely at replacing traditional monitoring systems. We created this device made out of a nanomaterial that was able, because it was certified as a medical device, to replace the traditional halter, etc. Luckily, or I don't know, COVID hit. And basically this device, all of a sudden, became extremely useful also in other ways. And Umana and the T1 grew substantially, this growing substantially, because it enables the patient. It solves the problem that the patient is not anymore reliant on a technology to actually be able to monitor his vital signs in a clinical matter, but it's the opposite. The system is actually using the lifestyle of that patient, the patient living his normal life, in order for them to actually physically record quality data. And of course, that comes very, very easily. So this, and this time, the problem I believe at times we do is that we try to enforce technology on something that will help people instead of the other way around. I believe that technology should be at the service 
of patients. And I think with the T1, that's what we had actually done. So we utilized algorithms, traditional machine learning algorithms and technologies in order for us to monitor these patients in an effective way. And I think that is actually the mentality that we need to actually be changing in order for us to be able to, to move ahead. Okay? Apart from that, we can also actually move over. Recently, I invested in a company called Plex that actually does a little bit of a completely parallel thing, which is the analysis of this data. So what we do on that side is the same thing. It's not that we impose a technology on the patient, but the patient lives his normal life, and through medical AI, okay, certified technologies, we actually gather that data. This data, in this case, will be also coming from any type of device, and the platform, a centralized platform, utilizing traditional algorithms, basically analyzes and gives response to medical professionals so that the medical professional, at the end of the day, can actually make a proper diagnosis. So, it's very important, and I'm coming to an end because I'm seeing my time running through. It's very important that for any digital health system to work, digital system to actually be designed properly and effective, it needs to have all the stakeholders involved, from the actual administrators to the actual general practitioners to everyone. And I think that is, should drive any investor in medical technologies or anyone involved in medtech that it's important to have everyone on board. If any stakeholder is not part of the solution, it will become a problem. So it's very important for everyone involved to actually sit around the table when designing a digital health system in order for it to work. Otherwise, I think it's going to be a problem. So at the end of the day, to making life easier for everyone, okay, we don't need to work or think as a computer programmer or anyone, but we need to have a multidisciplinary approach when investing in medical startups or medtech technologies or being part of the actual growth of a particular technology. So, I came to the end of my presentation. I really wanted to thank everyone for having me, and I wish everyone uh, the continuance of a beautiful, beautiful conference. Thanks a lot.